When it comes to COVID-19 and self-isolation, there are many people who are worrying about weight. And the question is, what can or should they do about it? So the first thing I want to point out is that when it comes to the healthiest life we can actually enjoy living, that may be very different during the time of a terrifying pandemic than it is during normal life. And so I think it is very fair for people to give themselves some slack, given that we know food does provide us with comfort in times that are challenging. And that comfort is literal, where it changes our stress hormone levels. For the people who are concerned and really want to try to focus on some basic things that they can do to help reduce the risk of either gaining weight or potentially lose a little bit in isolation, it's the same basic principles that apply at all times. It's a reduction in liquid calories, and so certainly with COVID-19, there may be more people turning to alcohol for comfort, so reducing that can be helpful. It's cooking more frequently, keeping food diaries, unless you use them in a judgmental way, in which I, case I would not recommend it. But if you're able to use a food diary simply to collect information, that can be very helpful. The research on their use actually shows that people using them uh, lose twice as much weight as people who don't use them. Uh, reducing restaurants is a lot easier now during the time of COVID-19 than it was beforehand. And the one thing to keep in mind is that exercise is incredible for health. It's very beneficial to glycemic control, to your blood sugar control, but from a weight perspective, it really is a minor player. So if you've got some spare time, learn how to cook, do more time with meal, meal prep, uh, and again, reduce those liquid calories and those restaurant meals. So I can't say how all universities across Canada are handling the COVID-19 pandemic, but many I know have asked the researchers to reduce the amount of work that they are doing, at least on site, and to, if we're applicable, to be able to continue their research at home. Uh, that said, I believe that many labs are still open and functioning, um, continue to do research involving diabetes, but are doing so in a different way. We are implementing physical distancing measures that are ensuring the safety of our, of our workers, uh, and also, as I mentioned, working from home where, where, where we can. So I can, I can certainly just say to you, rest assured that we are a dedicated group of individuals who are working hard and doing what we can in this difficult time to try to discover a cure for diabetes. So thank you for your support. There's a lot you can do to look after yourself at this time when it may not be so easy to have a real life visit with your healthcare team or your family doctor. Don't neglect to explore choices you might have around visits by phone or by video conference with your family doctor or healthcare team. This is a time when looking after chronic diseases is important because it's important we don't forget to look after the regular things at this time when so much focus is dealing with the very acute things going on in the uh, hospitals at the moment. There are things you can do to look after yourself at home. Don't forget to take good care of your feet. Check them uh, on a regular basis. Keep them clean and uh, healthy. Use moisturizer to keep the skin in good condition. If you have a blood pressure mo monitor at home, you can check your blood pressure at home. Make a note of these readings and you can share them with your family doctor if you uh, are unwell or if you have any readings which are concerning. For scheduled visits like eye exams, dental exams or other routine healthcare maintenance, it may be worth making a note in your diary to rebook these uh, in the summer or the fall so that these don't get forgotten or missed out uh, this year. Reach out to your family doctor, see if they're able to see you virtually or over the phone because it's important that we don't forget about looking after chronic diseases at a time when so much focus is on acute diseases. Take care of yourself and I hope these comments help. We've received questions from people working in frontline roles, wondering whether they can safely carry out their job responsibilities given that they live with diabetes. For those of you in frontline roles, we thank you. Whether you're in a grocery store, a hospital, a long-term care facility, your efforts really are essential and you're carrying them out under especially difficult circumstances. So we appreciate your efforts. 
I want to remind you, as I described in the last video clip, that for people with well-controlled diabetes, they're not necessarily at any higher risk than the general population. And so their decisions around employment should be no different than the general population. However, some are at elevated risk, and particularly those who, together with their diabetes, may live with obesity or high blood pressure. For those people, you may wish to speak to your physician to see if you can get a medical certificate that verifies you cannot safely carry out your job duties due to health risk. You would then approach your employer and see if you can be offered modified duties, ideally work from home, although clearly if you're in a frontline role that may not be possible, or be offered a temporary layoff. If you are laid off, there are resources available to help support your income through employment insurance or in some cases the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, CERB. Both of those programs are described on the website canada.ca. Thanks for tracking with us during this difficult season. We're glad that you've made Diabetes Canada part of your community of support. Someone living with type 2 diabetes with blood sugars that are at target has an immune system that is very similar to someone who does not have diabetes. In the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, what we know is that people living with diabetes do not appear to be at higher risk of getting the COVID-19 infection. However, if someone living with diabetes gets the COVID-19 infection, the severity of the infection may be greater. So therefore, the best thing that you can do to protect yourself are the same things that everyone else is doing, which is physical distancing and lots of hand washing. I wanted to share some thoughts with you about personal protective equipment that you as a layperson in your community may want to take advantage of. Clearly there are still a lot of disagreements about the value of and the necessity of wearing masks and gloves for instance. However, there is good agreement about if you are going to wear them, you need to use them properly and that's what I'd like to speak to. I see in my weekly trip to the grocery store occasionally people wearing gloves but then treating them as though they somehow neutralize the virus and make every touch safe. And so they may be in the grocery store and they touch their eye with their glove and then reach for something. And they've touched six other things before they put their finger in their eye. The glove doesn't get rid of the virus, it just keeps it from getting on your hand. So all the rules about not touching your face still apply. Also, if the gloves have become contaminated when you're out and doing your, your uh, business, then be careful how you take them off. So use the glove to remove the glove. And in any case, wash your hands after you take the gloves off. For masks, and I'm not going to demonstrate with a mask on because you might find it difficult to hear what I'm saying, Remember that the main purpose of a mask is to protect other people from you given that there's a reasonable possibility that you may have the virus and have no symptoms. Uh, recent studies that have come out in the last couple of days suggest that close to 50% of people who got the virus had their exposure at the time the person they got it from had no symptoms, which means that you with no symptoms, may actually be a carrier and putting others at risk. The best way to protect other people then is to wear a mask. Make sure that the mask covers your nose and your mouth, uh, wearing it on your chin while convenient for talking or drinking uh, doesn't help anybody. So on your nose and mouth, covering as well as possible, and then don't touch it. So you've had a mask on, you've been out for a brisk walk, it felt great, and you come back and you're just about to go into your building and you just pull it away from your face a bit so you can breathe better. And then you touch the door handle of your apartment building and the elevator button. 
and you've just shared whatever is in that mask with anybody who follows after you. So once the mask is on, do not touch the mask and then remove the, the mask by the ear loops or the ties behind and put it somewhere either directly into a laundry bin or in a place where it can safely um, dry out and decontaminate for a week.